hello guys welcome back to another Android tutorial in this video we are going to create an Android application that fetch information from a remote server using JavaScript object notation or JSON so here is our online database our database name is product and table name is product info that contain three rows of data so now we are going to create an Android application that fetch all this information in the form of a JavaScript object notation or JSON. And here is the file manager of the server. So here is the PHP script that fetch information from table and encode the information as a JSON object. If you want to learn about how this PHP script made, you have to watch the previous video. So now create an Android project in Android Studio. So here I already create a project and here is the activity main.xml file that contain two buttons and a text view. So whenever you user click the get JSON button, the application will fetch information from the database on a remote server and uh, we have to display and the purpose of this text view is to display the JSON data. So here is the XML file that contain two buttons. This is the first button. Uh, with the onclick method get JSON and here is the second button with onclick method pass JSON and here is the text view with ID text view. So first we have to set up the needed permission. We have to set up the internet permission to fetch information from a remote server. So open up the manifest folder and open up the Android manifest to the XML file and add the needed permission. Users permission. The permission name is internet permission. Now we set, set the needed permissions. Now go to the main activity.java. First here we have to create some variable for text view. No need of a text view. First here I declare some string variable. Uh, name it as json string. Now we have to define the onclick method for the button. The onclick method is get JSON, copy this method name, go to main activity.java and define that method public void method name is get JSON. Add the needed parameters. Here we need a view argument. So we need some background thread. So we have to define some class here. I name it as background task. And extends this class using async task. Uh, we have to define the generic type. For convenience, here I use void for each of these generic type. We have to change it later. And now we have to overwrite some implement some method. We have to implement a method called the do in background. Click OK. Uh, also here we need some other lifecycle method of async task. First one is on pre-execute. Uh, now we need some other method called the on progress update. And finally we need the on post execute method. And within this class here I declare some string variables, string name it as json url. Okay, now we have to uh, initialize that variable. So here I am going to initialize that particular variable inside the on pre-execute method. And here is our domain name, I copy this domain name. So json url equal to paste the domain name here and the particular php script name is json get data dot php so json get data dot php okay now we have to get information from database so we have to do something in the doing background method so first we have to create an object of URL new URL and pass the URL here the URL is available on this variable called uh, JSON URL 
we have to use some try catch block here now we have to create an object of HTTP URL connection URL dot open connection here you need to add some catch block it's an IO exception and here we have to type cast this one into HTTP URL connection now we have to create some before the reader object before the reader name it as before the reader equal to new before the reader and so before declare the before the reader object we have to declare some input stream reader input stream name it as input stream and get the input stream from HTTP URL connection HTTP URL connection dot get input stream okay now we have to initialize the before the reader object before the reader equal to new before the reader and here new input stream reader and pass the input stream reader object okay uh, now we have to get information from the before the reader for that here we already declare some variable called the JSON string so start some while loop here and specify the condition as JSON string equal to uh, before the reader dot read a line and put all this one in a single bracket and condition is is not equal to null in that case here we need another variable called the string builder string builder equal to new string builder okay now we have to append the each of the line each of the line into the string builder so string builder dot append append this string called the json string JSON string and put a new line and finally we have to return this JSON string we have to return this string builder so before that we have to close some connections first we have to close the before the reader before the reader dot close now we have to close the input stream reader input stream and finally we have to disconnect the HTTP URL connection HTTP URL connection dot disconnect and finally we have to return the string builder variable so return string builder dot to string and trim the white spaces so here the return type is a string so we have to change the return type of this doing background into string so we have to change it in generic type of the async task so here some result is there the result type is string now we got the result inside the on post execute method so we have to change the argument type into string for convenience here I change the variable name into string into result So here I declare some text to view variable. Name it as text to view equal to find view by id r dot id dot text to view and type catch this one into text to view. And finally set the JSON string on into this text to view. Text to view dot set text. result 
Okay, so whenever user click the get to JSON button, it will get information from the database in the form of a JSON and display the JSON data inside the text view. So now we can test the application. Okay, before we secure this application, we have to start the background task. We forget to start the background task. So from the get JSON method, we have to create an object of background task. So create an object of background task and call the execute function this will execute the background task and there is no arguments now we can run the application okay now the application available on a virtual device you can test this application on a virtual device or in a real android device so now i am going to click the get json button it will fetch information from the database in the form of a json so here is the json data that contain here here is the array name server response here is a square bracket that means this is an array name and that contain three json objects so here is our date here is our table here is our table that contain three rows of data so here there is three json object this one represents the first json object and here is a comma operator that means this is the first json object and here again a bracket curly bracket start this is the second json object uh, there is a comma operator and here is the third json object for more validation just open json lint that, that, that is a free json validator tool so open your browser and search for json lint open this website this is a free online json validation tool now copy the url json url here is the json url i copy this url and put it here now click the validate function this will fetch the JSON data. Now we can compare it with the application. So here, this is a valid JSON. Here is the array name. And this is the first row. Here is our data. And after comma operator, here is the second JSON object. And the final one is the last JSON object. And here is the end of the JSON array. I hope you understand the concepts. In the very next video, we are going to pass this JSON data and display the JSON data in a list view. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.